tonight on IFAF. Idaho Falls and Fiesta. Ole! I did not know these things existed. No, but damn, it's impressive. I actually end up using a sunflower like a little umbrella for him to get back to the car with. When you're naked and you're wearing shoes, mm -hmm. you look more naked. Right in the cob? <laughs> yeah, right, right in the cob. <laughs> oh, my kernels! <laughs> IFAF, Idaho Falls Local, Independent, Alternative, Media, with Mike Nelson and Carly Morgan. Welcome from the land of car washes and soda shacks. Oh, Mormon Starbucks. Yeah. <laughs> Hit that like button and let YouTube know you like Idaho Falls infotainment, opinion, and bad jokes. Mm -hmm. Lincoln Post. <laughs> On this episode, we will talk about a new coffee shop in Rexburg. A real one? Of all places. Shocking. A feud between Arby's and Fiesta Olay signs on 17th. <laughs> Ooh. A slightly terrifying flood in Orem, Utah. Mm -hmm. Spirit Halloween already open. We pay tribute to a cleaning god from Pocatello, and a 50-year-old cold case murder has been solved. Wow. I want you all to look at Carly's makeup. It's very demure, <laughs> very mindful. You know, a lot of people, they interview looking like Marge Simpson, mm -hmm. and then they go to work looking like Patty and Selma. Right. <laughs> okay, as someone who's hired people before, uh -huh. yes. That is so true. So true. Yeah. So true. And like, realistically, it was for a retail store, so it wasn't a big deal. Like, I didn't really care. Like, honestly... If you showed up drunk, but you still did your job and like sold a lot, I wouldn't give I wouldn't give two shits. Right? <laughs> you know, really, all I want is for them to be personable and like for people not to be weirded out by them. So I, I just want to say to our listeners who don't know every single meme on the planet, especially this new one, <laughs> very <laughs> right. demure, very mindful. <laughs> There's a great site called Know Your Meme. I love that place. Anytime you feel <laughs> like you're uh, not in it. You can go there. We're referencing one Jules LeBron, who is a grocery <laughs> store cashier in Illinois, uh -huh. a Latina transgender woman. Uh -huh. And um, here she is. And, uh, you know, I do have a theory about, um, you know how drag queens and transgender women in particular mm -hmm. can get away with a lot of cattiness? Sure. I think that the more we... Um, are accepting of that community as cis people, the less willing we're going to be to put up with that condescend, the less cute we're going to think that condescending right. attitude is. I think that's fair. Yeah. She's, she's just got that. Oh honey. Yeah. The more that we you don't even them, know. Yeah. I mean, yeah. The more that we accept them as just people on the same level as us. Right. The, yeah. the cattiness, mm -hmm. the novelty of the cattiness is going to wear off. Right, right. Or wear thin, I think. As as long as as long as it's funny though. That's what I was gonna say. I'm actually so glad you brought that up. Cause at the end of the day, I don't really care who's a bitch, so long as you're a funny bitch. <laughs> right. If you're just a bitch, I'm gonna hate you no matter what. Yeah. But if you're that's, funny And yeah. that, and that's a I think a balance I've try to achieve at least on this show is be just a little funnier <laughs> mm -hmm. than I am, you know, uh, an a-hole. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Caddy. And, and sometimes critical and sure. stuff like that. Yeah. But I yeah, completely she, agree. She ends the video by saying, there's your reality check diva. What name do you want me to make it out to or something like yeah, that? Yeah. Right. <laughs> just like, Oh my God. Which honestly, way over the top. No, no, no. I love that. <laughs> I loved that. First off, like stealing it, using it. Like, it's just great. Cause I think a lot of people do kind of need a little reality <laughs> check and I'm glad that she sort of pointed it out. It's absolutely true. Yeah. 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 And also, it's just a funny way of putting it. <laughs> <laughs> She's been on Kimmel. She was invited to the Democratic National Convention, I guess, to did speak. Did she go? She did not because she had a <gasps> wig appointment. <laughs> That's hilarious. I love that. <laughs> anyway. But I mean, also, you can't go to a big event like that with your wig looking like shit. No, so no. really, she made the right yeah. decision. Like, I would never go to anything big looking like trash. Because, like, then that's what you're going to be known for. Right. I'd rather not go at all yeah. than go looking crappy. Yeah. You can sing a hundred national anthems, but if you sing mm -hmm. one drunk... Right, you right. You make... You get roasted. <laughs> <laughs> right. And to be fair, I mean, her face is cashing the check, you know? Yes. Yeah. Like, she's, she's right. She looks good. 
You know, she doesn't have over-the-top makeup. She doesn't look ridiculous or anything. She is wearing appropriate stuff. And that can't always be said. That can't always be said for people. It is very demure. Yeah. <laughs> very mindful. Uh, so, Jules, LeBron, enjoy your 15 minutes. And just mm -hmm. in case you're wondering what the true definition of the word demure is, mm -hmm. it's typically used in reference to a woman who is reserved, modest, and perhaps even a little shy. Right. So, it's not like she even uses the word correctly. I mean, I wouldn't say it's incorrect. But, but she's... Right, right. I mm -hmm. suppose so. Yeah. I thought she was going to make the point that um, you don't show up dressed conservatively or mm -hmm. demurely to a job interview and then go, you know, with wild hair right. and four-inch fingernails. I mean, yeah, I think that's exactly the point that she makes. Well, but Patty and Selma are train wrecks. <laughs> yeah, they're train She's wrecks. She's talking about women who show up, or even men... Uh, who show up to a job interview looking sharp and then show up to work like in sweatpants and a baggy t-shirt. Right, right. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, that's fair. All right. But I mean, the, that's like, fun. the points that she points out, like her shirt not showing off everything and stuff like that. Right. Like, She's only yeah. showing a little bit of Chi-Chi and not the Cho-Cho. Not the whole Cho-Cho, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Whatever that is. Well, I know Chi-Chi is Mexican slang. It's Spanish slang for boobies. Tatas? Okay. Yeah. yeah so. oh, okay. I don't know what the cho-cho is. I'm not super sure about that, but I have a feeling that she probably knows more about that than we do. <laughs> yeah, we'll defer to Jules LeBron on that one. <laughs> Perhaps not her real name. Moving along, you want to get straight to the... Maybe uh, not her government name, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, straight to... Comments and follow-ups. Earwigs are not so-called because they hang out in ears of corn. What? I had to look it up. Really? Yeah. They are called earwigs because when their wings are unfolded, they resemble a human ear. Now, that's that's cool. Um, wings? Yeah, thank you. Earwigs can fly? Um, yeah, I didn't know that. That's <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> right. That he beat my jeebies. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Adequately. <laughs> Moving on. Oh, something I wanted to mention last episode. There's a new fennec fox at the zoo. Yes. A little baby. Sahara. So cute. Yeah. Born to parents Jojo and Finnick. I know. Isn't that so cute? Finnick the fennec. <laughs> I know. I cute. love that. I wonder who was sleeping. I wonder who I have the picture of then. That little sleepy sleepy baby that I got the picture of. I wonder if that was Joe or Finnick. I jo know. Jojo. Yeah, Jojo or Finnick. But yeah, Idaho Falls Zoo. If you just want to go fennec foxes, red pandas, mm -hmm. and what were those little bears? Oh, the sloth bears. The sloth bears. I do love the sloth bears. We'd be okay with that. Yeah, right? Yeah. Okay, honestly, I wonder if there's some, like, I just want to, like, I want to see the baby. Like, I want a zookeeper to go in and just pick up the baby and hold them in for the glass so that I can Give see them. Give me baby. I mean, honestly, my ideal would be that I want to be the one to hold the baby. Yeah. But I'm sure that can't happen. No, you can always you can always hold a, a baby uh, bear at uh, Yellowstone uh, Bear Run. I just, I love the little critters. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and it's officially back to school as of today for most D1 How and D93. How wild is that? Yeah, so slow down. I actually saw a uh, school zone sign blinking mm -hmm. on Friday. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow, they're trying to get people back in the habit. I think maybe that's it. That's smart. That's all. And yeah, in fact, I'm not sure because I went to Winco and back, mm -hmm. and it was on the whole, both times, so I wonder if it was blinking all day. Huh. To get people back in the mode. Yeah, to back get people in back mode. in the mode. Huh. Interesting. If so, smart. R very. Also, I kind of wonder how those signs work. I know this sounds so dumb. Like, but like, where's the master control there? There's, like, there's got to be a switcher somewhere. Yeah. Like, right? is there like some Morgan Freeman character, like in Batman, where he's watching <laughs> a bunch of monitors somewhere in the city and he can see every inch of it and he controls the signs that way? Someday or is it'll it, be like, like that for sure. I mean, I have to assume it's on some kind of like preset schedule but how do they change it i want to know yeah is it is it like a janky um water sprinkler timer from the 70s right do they have to go to the pole open a panel flick some switches and that's what i want to know? know mondays 10 to 10 15 you know like right. how does that work that's what i want to know you know what whoever does it why don't you email us and let us know so that we can uh, join you on a little ride along and see how you work the signs so that would be cool yeah i don't ever want to become establishment enough to represent the city of idaho falls from a governmental uh, standpoint 
But I want to know the mysteries of the universe. We need an insider. <laughs> yeah. Who's going to be our city of Idaho Falls insider that can answer stupid questions like this? <laughs> right. We're That's taking applicants want. right now. <laughs> all right. And finally, a comment from uh, Don Yeager. We were talking about the French pole vaulter mm. experiencing mixed emotions. Right, right. Didn't win a medal, but his package might. <laughs> <laughs> Right? <laughs> His bulge is world famous. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Don Yeager said, I've heard mixed emotions defined as when your teenage daughter comes home from her date at 2 a.m. with a Gideon Bible. <laughs> okay. Okay. I will say, however, <laughs> like, so she's been on, you know, they've yeah. been reading the Bible yeah. all night long. Sure. If she comes home with a Gideon Bible, Don, <laughs> uh, sometimes, you know, Gideon Bibles are placed in. Oh. Hotel rooms. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I think I get it. That's the only hole I'm going to shoot in that analogy. Well, and I kind of wonder if that's why he specified that type of Bible. Well, I, but it, it's got to be coming home from a date at 2 a.m. You got to be mad about right, that. Right, right. With a Gideon Bible. Oh, that's got to be. I guess you would hope that the reason that she has it is because she wants to repent, maybe? Or something. <laughs> something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yikes. She's ready to put her right hand on it or whatever. <laughs> I've heard mixed emotions defined as watching your mother-in-law drive off a cliff in your brand new Ferrari. Right. Yes, I've heard that one. <laughs> yeah. Big news, sports fans. I've decided to start calling everybody sports fans. <laughs> Plans are in the works to prevent trucks from getting stuck at the Northgate Mile underpass. Oh, about time. So I, when I first heard this, I thought D Street underpass. Which probably could also use it, to be fair. But yeah. I mean, they just redid it like, I think, over five, but under 10 years ago. That sounds right. A truck got stuck like the same week. Of course. But this one we're talking about is the one, let's see, let's say you're traveling north on the Yellowstone Highway and you want to go... The best landmark I can think of being by it is Adam and Eve. Yeah. We're going to leave it at that. In between Adam <laughs> and Eve and the Frosty Gator, that one with the, there's a billboard yes. with a clock. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. I guess I hadn't heard of any trucks getting stuck there before. Oh, oh I feel like I've seen that a lot. Oh, okay. Yeah. Especially because I'll often go that way and then take the little overpass on there. Yeah. And so there have been lots of times when like I'll go to take that overpass and I'll realize that there's a truck stuck there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Bummer. Yeah. Well, and also I think that that's like the way that a lot of places, like a lot of big trucks will come into town, you know, like they'll try to go under that cause that's just where they're coming from. Cause they come off of the old highway and yeah, which sucks for them. <laughs> Whoopsies. Well, and it's already a 14 foot, uh, Height is clearance, it? which is pretty good, according to the sign on it. Yeah. All I know is they've got to fix that head, that grate on the right heading south. Oh, I hate that one. Always yeah. go boom, 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 boom. Oh, over it's that. so bad. That sucks. Well, and also it all it makes me sad how many pigeons are always on the road down there. Oh yeah. Yeah, there's always like at least a couple <laughs> of smushed birds. Mm. It's real sad. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is a good place for a leftover because I wanted to show you this video. I never park on the train tracks. This is like, what, a country mile, half a mile away from the underpass we were just talking about? Mm -hmm. Right in front of the Museum of Idaho. Right. Heading mm -hmm. west. And uh, I never, ever park on the train tracks. I do sometimes when I'm feeling really dangerous. Except when I do. And <laughs> obviously you see the uh, how close I was to the train there. <laughs> Thankfully, I don't think it was moving, or if it was moving, it was moving very slowly. Right. But, um, yeah, I posted that a few weeks ago. I meant to throw it on this show, mm -hmm. but there was just never a time to talk about that. That's fair. That's this fair. Is mildly related. Yeah. Well, and they've got the little bars that come down, so I think if it was moving, those would have been down. Yeah. So you would have been, yeah, you would have known. Yeah, my first thought was, um, how much trouble am I in? Uh huh. And I realized, okay, I'm not enough, enough to whip out my phone and go, yeah, I'm not doing too bad. Right, right. Uh, but then my second thought was, well, what if it does start moving again? <laughs> and that's when you're like, okay, I could probably back up a little bit and get it between those two cars. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You got to have a game plan. But yeah, there's video evidence of Mike being a bonehead. <laughs> <laughs> Guess you can't judge other people too much, can you? Guess not. Also downtown, I since we're on some leftovers here, I wanted to show you this. This is right in between what, like the pie hole and the snake bite? Oh yeah, uh -huh. the little alleyway there on Park. Mm -hmm. There's a mural for Page Insurance. Mm -hmm. 
Made to look like Yellowstone, I think, right? Yeah, yeah. Big, and I think they do a pretty good job, too. Yeah, big bison, big mm-hmm. Tatanka there, and probably mm-hmm. Old Faithful spewing off in the background. Mm-hmm. Well, somebody, I don't know if it was Page Insurance or just somebody being a smartass, <laughs> tacked a sign <laughs> onto the it's, light pole there. Uh-huh. And it says, warning, do not approach Buffalo, and then National Parks. And then somebody... It, it looks like it was sort of spray painted, but probably came uh-huh. this way. Probably. They crossed out the word not and then wrote in for selfies. So it reads, warning, do approach Buffalo for selfies. And after National Parks, they put a Y. An S-Y. S-Y. Yeah. Right. For, uh, I, I suppose, to look like a Banksy. Which I think is super smart, by the way. So I'm all for that. Yeah, I think it's fun. And if you turn around, I don't know if you knew this, but there's a Pets of Downtown mural. Mm-hmm. I have seen it before. It's yeah. sort of like like in between this and what's the, it's not Diagon Alley. It's, uh, oh, shoot. I follow him on Instagram. I know the alley you mean with all the fun little artwork. Pugs Lane Alley. Thank you, Pugs Lane. I can't Good believe job. it. Good uh, job. But be- I'm impressed. This makes me want to kind of cruise the alleys. Right? In downtown Idaho Which Falls. I, I'm glad that they're making them into little art pieces and stuff. Yeah. Because otherwise you get a bunch of vandals who go in there and, you know, filthy them up. And they still could. They could, but what happens I think when, people are less likely to. What happens when you have a painted mural on a brick wall and then somebody comes along later and spray paints graffiti on it. I mean, I think it depends on the graffiti. Can you remove it without removing the mural, or is everything gone by then? I think it'd be pretty hard to. You'd probably have yeah. to paint over it. You know, get the artist in to touch it up. And I'm glad we don't have that problem. Yeah, not too often, at least. Here in little Idaho Falls, Idaho. I mean, sometimes we've got a, a hooligan or two, but, mm-hmm. but realistically, people tend to leave stuff like that alone. Yeah, if you want to spray graffiti on something... There's the train. <laughs> yeah. You know, ever since I was a little kid, I really liked seeing all of the graffiti on the trains. I sometimes do, too. I think it's fun. And I actually very specifically remember this really cool graffitied uh, pine tree or like set of three pine trees on a train that shows up every couple of years. Oh. Like I've seen it recurringly. And I always thought that was really cool. I can't say I've ever seen the same graffitied railroad car more than once. Really? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's all interesting. Right. Okay. Also, as reported on this show earlier this year, Dutch Bros in Rexburg opened on Friday. I know. I bet they're so excited. (laughs) Yeah. Now they don't only have Mormon Starbucks. Now they have Dutch Bros. (laughs) (laughs) Top comment was, oh, the devil's tea in God's country. (laughs) I know, right? (laughs) (laughs) I want to show you this, too. I didn't know Dutch Bros did this. Mm -hmm. I've had a lot of coffee. I've Mm -hmm. had the best coffee, um, at least in America. Pete's. And Starbucks. Okay, yeah. Pete's was the guy who actually helped start Starbucks right. with the Starbucks guys. Mm. Um, so so I've had some really good coffee. I've never craved an Americano like I have a Dutch Bros Americano. Yeah, you're kind of obsessed with those. It's for whatever reason, the taste is just there. And by the way, did you know it's called an Americano? Because in World War II, the U.S. sailors would go there and uh, the espresso was too strong. So they'd have them water it down. And Hilarious. That's like one of the first things you learn on uh-huh. a trip to Italy, I guess. <laughs> I could see it. That was a meme a while back. <laughs> anyway, she was like in Italy and giving Italian facts. And that was uh-huh. every other one. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> but um, look at this. This here is a 96 ounce Joe to go. I did not know these things existed. No, but damn, it's impressive. And as you can tell, it sort of looks like the base of a windmill. Yeah, it does. Very cute, guys. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I will sometimes do, Mm -hmm. like on a Sunday when we need to edit and I need to hit a deadline. (laughs) Right, right. uh, I will go get a Joe to go. It takes a while. You're supposed to, you know, they say, oh, well, if you order it in advance, I don't know how. I've got the app. It's not on the app. Well, and also we've Maybe tried calling call. them too. Yeah. Do you remember when we tried to call him that one day to yeah. get that info? I don't remember what we were going to ask him, but no one answered. I'm just saying, if you want 96 ounces of coffee, which can last me up to a week. Right. Um, Dutch Bros, Americano, Joe to go. It's incredible. I think it's like 30 bucks. That's not bad. It's not bad. For consider- coffee for a week? Considering it's 10 cups of coffee. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah. Can I be totally honest? Sure. I don't like Dutch Bros. 
No, I don't. I okay, pre- I prefer Starbucks if I'm gonna go. Now, to be fair, I also just don't really like coffee. You like your pinkity drinkity. I do like my pink- <laughs> my pinkity drinkity. That's one of my favorite things there. Yeah. Um, but just in general, like that's why I love this show. Yeah. <laughs> we can have differing opinions. Right. Right. And you get to make up your own. <laughs> Now, but that's the thing. I just don't like coffee in general. It's an acquired taste that I never acquired. <laughs> and so I'm more of a tea girly if I'm going to get anything like that. The London Fogs at Starbucks are just so good. And honestly, I feel like Dutch Bros uses way too much sugar. I know they use way too much enthusiasm. Yes. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's all of their it su- maybe it's all their sickeningly sweet attitudes pouring <laughs> into the cup. You know, but everything I get there is always so grossly sweet. Okay. Like it's not balanced at all. And I, you know, and they always look at me sideways mm-hmm. when I say if I'm ordering just one americano, mm-hmm. some room at the top. Yeah. And they're like, "Are you sure? No cream, no sugar?" Yeah. I'm yeah. going to go home and pour almond milk in it. They don't have almond milk? Oh, I don't know. Maybe they do. I'm sure they do. Uh, or or I'm going to go home and pour my protein shake in it. Oh, that's fair. That's different. Right. Yeah. So I'll, I'll like split it up in two and <laughs> right. do this until... Yeah. <laughs> do that until it's a nice creamy color. Yeah. yeah that's until fair. the color's just right. <laughs> hey, speaking of almond milk... <laughs> yeah? Can we try our thing? Yes. Okay. Yes. This episode's treat time features... These Pepperidge Farm mint Brussels left over from Christmas. I was gonna say those looked awfully seasonal. Last Christmas, <laughs> I gave you my heart. So the plan was, I was like, okay, uh, you know, you divide the year in half. If mm-hmm. December is twelve, then I'll have these on six. I'll have these in June. Right. Well, I forgot. <laughs> Fair. But it's a still, it's an unopened package. So it should be fine. It should be. Well, and I mean, realistically. How long, like, how far in advance do you think they package those bad boys? Right. It's got to be at least six months. Are these a year old by now? Maybe. Let's find out how they taste more than six months later. You want to know what's funny? Huh. I was just cleaning out my pantry the other day and came across <laughs> some of our go- our Girl Scout cookies from our episode a while oh, back. Oh, yeah. Uh, and honestly, had a couple of, I've been snacking on those lemon ups for the last little bit. Okay. They're so good. <laughs> No, Rango, you can't has. Sorry, sir. They've got chocolate. And, oh, I blew it. Oh, no. You, well, you know, I um, I like to honor the packaging. Right, right. You ripped it. I almost had a perfect open there. Oh, you were so close. But and yet, tore. you screwed it. <laughs> Would you uh, like yeah, a I'll couple? A couple. couple three. I mean, take a whole sleeve if you want, or a two. whole basket. To be fair, what I was really wanting, honestly, is the almond milk. Like, my mouth is watering a little bit just for this. Okay. Mm. Jeez, I can't lift that arm very well. <sighs> they still smell minty fresh. They do. I can detect a little bit of bag smell or paper mm. smell mm-hmm. as if they've been sitting there for a while. Right. Not quite stale. Yeah, I wouldn't say stale at all. The taste... The crispity crunchiness, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. the mint and the creaminess, all there. If you weren't paying the closest attention, you wouldn't notice a difference at all. I'm so proud of myself. Yeah. This Those represents good. a huge accomplishment mm-hmm. for me to save <laughs> these for this long. No, oh, I know. I know you love your mint Brussels. Those might be your very most mm. favorite cookie, right? Yum. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Mm. Famous Amos chocolate chip. Mm, those are good, too. Those are always pretty good. I really like the uh, Girl Scout Samoas. Yes. Those might be my favorite. Those oh, are yeah. so Come good. On. Then, honestly, those, um, I think it's Toll House who does them, but the little sugar cookies with the pictures on them that come in a big old sleeve, they mm. do like seasonal ones. Mm. Mm-hmm. They're like little sugar cookies, and you can get like Santas or snowmen or pumpkins, ghosts, those things. I love those things. Right. Mm-hmm. I need to wash this down. <laughs> That's the most dead mm-hmm. air we've ever had on the show, I think. Mm-hmm. You know, almond Worth milk's it. good. Almond milk's good, but regular milk just hits different, man. 
And I don't know if I, if I was just raised in a milk love in a household, but I love milk, dude. Like Homelander. <laughs> <laughs> or that bitch from, uh, oh, what's it called? Get Out. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 Or the main character from A Clockwork Orange. There we go. Oh, yeah. We've talked about how yeah, it's lots villains. of villains are portrayed drinking milk. Yeah. Let's get a shot of this, though. I want to show you this. This is mm-hmm. Blue Diamond Unsweetened Almond Milk. Mm-hmm. And if you're not much of a milk drinker like I no longer am, mm-hmm. I believe that cow's milk is for baby cows. But this unsweetened, <laughs> just a little bit of vanilla flavor adds the mm-hmm. sensation of sweetness, I right. think. Right, which I like. I, I do like that a lot. Now, when I very first tried almond milk way back in the day, I could not drink the unsweetened stuff. Like, I had to get the vanilla sweetened almond milk. Yeah. Um, now, I think that the unsweetened is just phenomenal. You know, I wonder if it's just because I was young and I was still in that, like, sugar phase of, like, needing everything to be, like, high calorie because my body was craving it. Sure. Um, but, man, like, this is this is nice. But, you uh, know, when I went to that cabin with my family this last weekend. Yes. Um, How was that, by the way? Uh, phenomenal. <laughs> it was so nice. Mm-hmm. Uh, just to fill you in. So, my aunt from Connecticut came to visit. It was, like, her and her, her sons and stuff and their families. And they rented this massive luxury cabin up in Island Park. It was like twelve hundred bucks a night or something like that. It probably slept like thirty people. Like it was, it was a big, big place. Wow. You know, maybe that's a little much. It was at least twenty people though. By Airbnb Um, standards, thirty people. Right. Right. Because they put like four bunk beds in a room. (laughs) Yeah. Exactly. (laughs) Um, But yeah, it was just this massive, beautiful house with with its own private dock and everything. It was really nice. So the day before I'd gone paddle bo- uh, paddle boarding with my family, like they kind of sat on the dock and were hanging out and I was on the lake and stuff. And I was like face to face with this deer. I actually took a picture because I had my phone and a lanyard around my neck. Oh, wow. And then the next morning, I actually went out again and went paddle boarding and I got, I actually saw two deer this time, but I didn't get nearly as close as that first time, which was kind of a bummer. But just being in a pimp pad Oh, it was the and coolest. Then enjoying nature. Yeah. Oh, and I also got this really great slow mo video of some bats too. Okay. Yeah. So we can pop that up. That sounds amazing. So I didn't mean right. to derail you. You were saying something about almond milk. Oh, right. As well. it relates to the cabin. <laughs> so I was actually talking about regular milk. Oh. So I love almond milk, but I like, I love real milk. And that love was kind of reignited at the cabin because all growing up, like we drank a ton of milk. My dad is the milk drinkingest fiend I've ever met. <laughs> he goes through, I shit you not, a gallon of milk a day. Holy cow. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even mean to make that pun. But yeah. It's crazy. He drinks a lot of milk, dude. Huh. And when we were up at the cabin, there was only a half gallon in the fridge. Mind you, this is like for two meals that he needs to make this last for. And I actually think there might have been like... A half of another half gallon. Anyway, but he was like, we don't have enough milk. <laughs> like, like you could hear the like fear in his voice that he wouldn't have enough milk for all of his meals, you know? And in Island Park, sometimes it's a real pain in the ass right. to come down out of the mountains mm-hmm. or the hills or yeah, whatever. Yeah, get some groceries or something. Get to the general store and get back. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So I was kind of worried about him, but I did totally snack a glass of milk and I felt like, I just felt like a kid again. It was so nice. <laughs> all right. Back to school means thrifting, baby. At Elsie's Closet Upscale Resale. Trendy fashion that's budget friendly. Elsie's Closet is Idaho Falls' only thrift store devoted exclusively to women and women's fashion. And right now they have everything for back to school. Pants, tees, sneakers, bags, jewelry. A store for women, by women. Look for the pink sign just off Yellowstone on A Street. Use promo code IFAF to save 15% off your total purchase at Elsie's Closet. It's not just a stop at the thrift, it's a whole vibe. Selling your home? Make your move with Mike Helps Idaho. For over five years, I've been helping Idaho with real estate, buying, selling, investing. And now I'm joined by Carly Morgan to help you even more. You trust us to tell it like it is, and we'll be 100% with you. And we're backed and brokered by the best, Keller Williams Realty, East Idaho. And when you close, I donate $100 of my own money to a charity of your choice. 
So make your move with Mike Helps Idaho, Lincoln Post. Have you experienced locally raised beef? Virgin River Land and Cattle Company sources local Angus fed on green Idaho pastures for a rich beef flavor. You might be thinking about quantities of beef for Christmas presents or to feed your family throughout the year. Well, right now they're offering amazing 25-pound boxes with steaks, roasts, and ground beef. Find Virgin River Land and Cattle Company on Facebook and use promo code IFAF to save 15% on locally raised beef. Just in at DIY Weddings and Events, New Floral China. It adds such a sophisticated and feminine touch to any event. Just one example of the many things you can rent when designing your event, like the Polaroid guest book, candy salad jars, even a full service drink trailer. DIY Weddings and Event Rentals has great ideas for your next wedding or event, so don't do it all on your own. Call or text 208 403 2040 today. Use promo code IFAF to save 15% off all your rentals. In celebration of their 10th anniversary, our friends at Roof Rescue are giving away four free roofs to people who make an impact in our community. Thank you for your nominations. They are now closed and the winners will be announced September 2nd. Roof Rescue gives away free roofs every year to veterans, members of the military, first responders, teachers, or anyone who deserves it. In Idaho Falls, Twin Falls, and Logan, Lincoln Post, Roof Rescue, providing watertight peace of mind. Did your family or friends love their visit to Idaho Falls this summer? Send them the best souvenir, a unique homegrown tea from Teton t-shirts. Including retro-looking images of the water tower, the West Bank, how it used to be, Civic Auditorium, how it used to be. Check out tetontshirts.com. It's a brand new store, so make sure you put that in the URL. Or better yet, there's a link in this post, tetontshirts.com. Proudly wear a real piece of Idaho Falls, as sometimes modeled on this show. All right, why don't we start the second half with something slightly terrifying. Uh-huh. Th- this is what it looks like when floodwaters break through your basement window. Yikes. That's pretty awful. Well, and, and I think that we've been kind of getting some of their storms, too, because that happened down in Utah, right? That happened in Orem, Utah yeah. on Tuesday, August 13th in what city officials are calling a 100-year flood. Damn. Now. I mean, I would retrospect. agree with that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, there are a couple of signs that you can tell that happened in Utah. I'm sure you noticed. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Let's focus. Okay. But first we need to say the family's okay. Which, thank goodness. Yeah. Everybody's okay. Mm-hmm. A lot of terrified screaming in there you heard. Right. Everybody's okay. It was a double pain in the ass, though, because they had just finished that basement Like for their in-laws or something. (laughs) But yes, let's talk about how we knew before I even got the story behind it, Uh just watching that video, (laughs) I knew it was in Utah. (laughs) Tell us, Carly. Uh, Well, I don't know if you noticed the Mormon-style Jesus statue in the corner basically commanding the flood with his hands. (laughs) (laughs) Just saying. (laughs) Now, if you don't know what we're talking about, it's it's the one, it's the pretty common LDS Jesus Mm -hmm. with his arms outstretched mm-hmm. and his hands open. Yeah, the one that you tend to find in visitor center uh, visitor centers at temples. Uh-huh, like in Salt Lake. Mm-hmm. But the way, in context, because he's in the background <laughs> with his arms just kind of out like this, it almost looks like he's going, what the hell, man? Again? <laughs> crap again? Yeah. <laughs> again right. with this shit? <laughs> or, and now this happens. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He just right. looks, he looks kind of exas- <laughs> exasperated. Exacerbated. No, no wait, exacerbated exasper- is the word right. I was going to say. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Jeez Louise. He looks, he looks exasperated. Yeah, like exasper- <laughs> exasperated. You might be exhausted. One of them's. <laughs> one of them's things. <laughs> it's just, now that we know the family's okay, and I'm sure insurance is going to cover it. Mm-hmm. It's kind of funny. A little bit. <laughs> Hopefully they'll get much nicer, newer things with that insurance money. Yes, I hope uh, so. The other thing I saw on there that showed me that it was a Mormon household, by the way, the stand for the electric piano. Oh. Did you see that in the hallway? I didn't notice that. Yeah, when it pans. Okay. Yeah, yeah there yeah. were a couple of little things that I was like clocking. Yeah, the stand and the electric piano, I think, have replaced the mm-hmm. tradition. I know a lot of households that mm-hmm. still have the traditional, you know, upright piano. Yeah. 
but I would love an upright piano. Per- like I can't play one, but I sure would love to learn. <laughs> just to have one in the parlor. Yeah, well, and I like to tinker around. First, you around. need a parlor. <laughs> I will. Say, so my grandma has one. Uh, um, yeah. And when I was like probably thirteen and really into MCR, I did totally learn. I taught myself the beginning of the opening uh, notes of the Black yeah, Parade. Yeah, the Black Parade. <laughs> Absolutely. Ding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just plucked it out by ear. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. It's actually kind of funny because it's sort of a like down up motion. Like, yeah, it's like a climbing scale. It's nice. And it's sort of a takeoff on the, um, on pomp and circumstance, I believe the graduation March, isn't it? I hadn't caught that, but I could see, but I could see why you would think that. Yeah. Evocative of that. Yeah, I could see it. So anyway, everybody's okay. <laughs> Thank goodness. We're so glad. You know, I kind of wonder if those, if the storm that caused that are some of the ones that we've been getting too. I wonder. Yeah, we got mm-hmm. uh, quite a bit of rain last week. And some thunder too. We got some rain at the very end of our trip to the Wild Adventure Corn Maze Sunflower Days. Right, right. This is what it looked like. Uh-huh. And, and you can see this is we're sort of facing west-ish. Mm-hmm. You can see that sun going down and those dark storm clouds. And we were there for an hour afterwards till mm-hmm. not, they're open till nine. Uh-huh. And um, we got this pleasant summer rain. For me, it was the perfect night. It was pretty nice, honestly. The amount of mud that we had to deal with was not <laughs> ideal. <laughs> no, it was, it was suboptimal, as <laughs> well, we say. And, and I felt kind of bad for poor little Rango, you know, because I just held him the entire time. And he... Okay, I will say he had a field day when we were there because he was just, you could see his little nose going oh, just, crazy. And they said you can bring a dog as long as uh-huh. it's, it's on a leash, right? Yeah. yeah. On, a, on a leash, well-behaved, and you pick up after him if he needs picked up after. Okay. Super simple. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we went, he had a great time, but I felt bad at the end because then he was getting a little rained on <laughs> and I could tell he was getting a little uncomfortable because yeah. he does not like the rain. Oh, I loved it. Yeah. I actually ended up using a sunflower, like a little umbrella for him to get back to the car with. <laughs> and we've got a, you heard it here first. We've got a, we've got it on good authority that they are extending it by, it was supposed to end this past weekend. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, but now you can go this weekend. Extending it by one more week. How exciting is that? Yeah. And then they shut down for a while. Mm-hmm. And then the Wild Adventure Corn Maze itself opens, I think, in mid-September? Uh, it's September 16th. Here's the obligatory Carly picture for this year. We showed you last year's last week or two weeks ago. Right. I do like that Senorito Beanie Weenie is in it. <laughs> and I want you to check out his tag. Carly's always so extra, but look at this. <laughs> His tag is the Idaho Falls Water Tower. It is. Actually, that's by a local artist, too. She does all kinds of really cool handmade uh, collars, leashes, and tags. Um, She does a lot of anime-themed stuff, which is super fun. Uh, Let me see if I can find her name so that we can include it. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so you can find all of her stuff at Mioyani. That's M-E-O-Y-A-N-I.com. Uh, she's got all kinds of really cute little designs, and you can have custom tags made, too. Link in post. We'll do that for you. And then, you know the uh, Homer disappearing into the bushes meme? <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> because the sunflowers just butted up right next to the corn stalks uh-huh. for the corn maze, I decided to do my own disappearing Homer <laughs> only into the corn. Mm-hmm. Here it is. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. You goober. That was fun. <laughs> I've told you my other idea for a cornfield too, right? No, I don't know if you have. I want to know if any farmers will take me up on this. I say take me up on oh, this wait. like I'm offering you something. Okay, wait. I think I do know what you're going to say. I don't know if any farmers Your dream. would um, do this for me. Would allow you to do this. It's just a thought I had, one of those intrusive thoughts. Uh-huh. You know the call of the void? Yes. When you're uh-huh. going around a curvy mountain road. Oh, and you're yeah. like, what if I just let go of the wheel? Yeah. Yeah. Or you're like standing on a cliff and you're like, I, I could just jump. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is an intrusive thought that I'd like to act on. Now, I'll only do it, you know, with with permission from the landowner. Right. I would like to go. And in a private enough place that no one will see you. <laughs> yeah. And it's going to have to be at night in an undisclosed right. location. Right. I would like to go streaking <laughs> through a cornfield. <laughs> Just go running as fast as I possibly can. It just even maybe in my skivvies is fine. Right, right. As fast as I possibly can through a cornfield. I want to know what that feels like. Would you be wearing shoes? 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I would hope so. Yeah, yeah. Man, I bet you'd feel like one of those aliens from Signs if you did that. <laughs> yeah. Maybe that's where I got the idea. <laughs> Maybe. I want to go running through a cornfield. <laughs> I mean, I I wonder if your face would get sliced up from the leaves. I kind of want... I wouldn't worry as much about your face as I would other parts. Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying, what what's the likelihood that you go running through and one just comes swinging back and bops you right in the, <laughs> right in the wiener? It could happen. <laughs> it could happen. <laughs> right in the cob. <laughs> yeah, right, right in the cob. <laughs> oh, my kernels. <laughs> Bring me some butter, quick. <laughs> you popped your corn. <laughs> <laughs> but it, what's funny is when you're naked and you're wearing shoes, mm -hmm. you look more naked. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you certainly feel more naked. Right. It's it's not an exhibitionist thing. <laughs> no. It's not, you don't want people to see you. No, no, no. Yeah, you just want to feel it. Well, okay. All right. Now we're getting, now it's sounding like a kink. I just want to know what it's like, mostly on my face. I right, don't, I don't right. really care about anything else. Yeah. So realistically, you could probably accomplish the same task shirtless. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah okay. Sure. That's fair. I just pictured, mm -hmm. you know, because I'm binary. Yeah. It's that's one fair. or the other. Yeah. On or off. Yeah. <laughs> Dressed I, or naked. You know, I will say there's a part of me that wants to be naked in a rainstorm. But, oh, yeah, sure, right? That's it. Like that's the just one, nature's shower. Like the one last week at Sunflower Days. I think I'd want it to be heavier rain. Oh, yeah, for like, sure. Like, I'd, I'd want it to be like gobs of rain. Then you need to move to Florida, my friend. Probably do. Oh, Florida freaks me out, though. Oh, but I mean, some they'll have afternoon showers that are just, right. they feel like warmer than a shower. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. I could see that. But they also have cockroaches, you know, this big. I couldn't do that. Well, and not to mention, if I moved to Florida, like, Rango would get eaten by an alligator in a week. Real quick. Like, I, I mean, I he wouldn't, because, like, I would defend him. But if he was left in a backyard for 10 minutes... He would get eaten by an alligator. <laughs> yeah. He would never be left alone right. for that long, but... But it, it could happen. It could happen. <laughs> hey, mad props, big ups, accolades, laurels even, mm -hmm. to Nathan Chandler, the owner of Confections Bakery in Pocatello. Oh, yeah. Good for him. He competed in Netflix's Blue Ribbon Baking Championship mm -hmm. and won. That's pretty cool. So we got to put that on the list of places to go. I want award-winning. I mean, award I was going to say. <laughs> I want Netflix award Like, the world doesn't revolve around East Idaho. No. It could be said. <laughs> we don't get a lot of action here. Not and a we're, we're going to talk about another guy f who is famous in Pocatello as well mm -hmm. in just a second. But, you know, Netflix is global, baby. Mm -hmm. There are people all over the world going, I want to go to where he is. Right. And we're well, 45 and, minutes away. Right. Well, and I love watching cooking shows in general. And the one thing that I wish is I wish I could taste the food, mm -hmm. you know, because you can get like a pretty good idea of how it should taste based on what the judges say and how it looks and stuff. But like, I've always wanted to just like reach through the screen and just, you know, Get a little lick. Yes. You know, and now we can. So. Man, I wish we would have been able to go uh, when, that day that we went to the Kane Brown concert. Right. If only I could have gotten off work a little sooner. Dang. We were already. In fact, let's talk about Kane Brown. Yeah. Why don't we? Here's our little corn dog toast. The corn dog company <laughs> was there. Always and, nice. And Kane Brown. Um, we were just in the back in the general admission, mm -hmm. which was fine by me. Yeah. It was actually kind of nice in my opinion. Now, you might be wondering, who's Kane Brown? And if you are, he's got what is, in my mind, the song of the summer. Mm -hmm. Miles on it with Marshmallow. Now, it is a jam. In fact, we've talked about it already uh -huh. on this show. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's a great song. And I ask you, when was the last time that somebody who had a huge smash mm -hmm. banger on the radio played while it was on the radio. Right. Yeah. We kind of, we either get the Nothing up against and Journey, but that was 40 years ago. No, you're right. We either get the up and comers or the ones who haven't been doing too much for a while. Right. <laughs> yeah. And so to be there for that, and we- That was pretty cool. Mikey doesn't really like live shows. <laughs> In fact, the tickets were courtesy of Don Jarrett from 96.1 and 102 yes. on The Wolf. Thank you, Don. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> And he was surprised to see me there. <laughs> yeah. Because <yeah. laughs> he knows. I thought that was kind of funny. I've just, you know, I did radio for a minute, mm -hmm. got a little jaded, <laughs> you know. Yeah, you did You did enough live shows. Walked out of a Madonna concert at the United Center in Chicago to go to the pick and save and do some grocery shopping. You know, it just, <laughs> it takes a lot for me. 
Right. I get it. I but get it. To go there and see that right now this summer was hot. I'm sure he booked a show before his song blew up. Probably. Yeah. Well, and I liked being the, in the general admission area because it kind of felt like being at a mini version of the fair almost. It was very fair like, wasn't it? Yeah. I don't know what it was about it except for like the little trailers with food and stuff that did it for me. But yeah, it just felt like a little teeny tiny fair. But yeah, people standing around talking, <laughs> walking around in the mm-hmm. back. I'm yeah. sure in the front it was a much more intense experience. Probably. I also really liked some of the pyrotechnics that he had. I don't know what it is about fire that makes so- songs just sound so much better. Yeah, fire is cool. Yeah. But like <laughs> when it goes off to the beat and stuff and it's like <laughs> little fire bursts, like yeah. it's just, it's rad, dude. And when you're close enough to feel it, yeah. that's hot. Yeah, that literally. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we did it perfectly uh, because I'm not concert averse, but close. <laughs> Right. We did it perfectly. Okay, gates open at 6, show starts at 8. Does he have an opener? Yes. That means he'll start at 9. We got there at 8.59. Mm-hmm. We heard a little bit of the film music. Mm-hmm. Uh, he played Miles on it 45 minutes into the show. Which you thought he was going to play it later on. I was like, no, no way will he play it in the middle of the show. Mm-hmm. He's going to put it at the end. Right. But I was like, I have a feeling it's going to be in the middle. Carly was I right. I was right. You win, <laughs> you win this round. <laughs> And then we went and gambled at the Shoshone Bannock Hotel and Events Center. Yeah, yeah, we just threw a couple bucks in. And and the best part was we got out of there before everyone else did. Yes. So we didn't have to deal with all that traffic, especially with the construction on I-15. There's two construction zones in between (gasps) Fort Hall and Idaho Falls. I couldn't do it. Yep. Man, even just leaving leaving the Butterfly Sanctuary uh, the last time I went, it was just hellish trying to get through Blackfoot. Uh-huh. I ended up sitting in traffic for a good 20, 30, 40 minutes. We cruised all the way home. It was yeah. great. It was perfect. So back to Pocatello. Some sad news last Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Uh, cleaning pioneer Don Aslett passed away. Do you know his story? I know that he's associated with the Museum of Clean. Yes, that's his. But I don't know anything else about his story. It's a six-story, 74,000 square foot uh, Museum of Uh Clean. Which has fascinated me for forever, and I still haven't gotten a chance to go in. Let's put it on our list. I would love to go there. We'll go to the Museum of Clean and Confections Bakery and see Nathan. (gasps) Ooh, yes! Okay, I... I love that idea. Hey, while we're at it, we should also stop by fucking Tasty. Yes. (laughs) They have great pho Uh at pho King Tasty. Yeah. They have even better tea. (laughs) (laughs) That's true. They do. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So Don passed away last Wednesday, 89 years old. Wow. He was, yeah. The only reason I know who he is, Uh is my mom bought his book, Clutter's Last Stand. Oh, he wrote over 40 books, this guy. Okay, that's pretty impressive. He was obsessed with cleaning. Uh-huh. We'll give you his cleaning tips here in a second. Well, I mean, he did live to almost 90. He must have been a pretty tidy fella. Yeah, well, and, <laughs> and speaking of the world coming to East Idaho, uh-huh. or East Idaho influencing the world, I suppose, uh-huh. uh, he was born in Twin Falls. Okay. Then he served a mission in Hawaii. Then he huh. went to ISU in Pocatello. Oh, nice. Started a cleaning company. Huh. Yeah, wow. which blew up. And then okay. the rest is history. But the only reason I know the guy is because of this book, Clutter's Last Stand. That's hilarious, by the way. My mom was the kind of gal who, when she had an issue, she'd go and buy a book about it Uh huh. and never read the book either. <laughs> wouldn't deal with the issue. Wouldn't read the book. Bless but, her heart. But felt like she was doing something by buying the book. But she took a, yeah, she yeah. Took a big step. <laughs> yeah. And that was enough. <laughs> anyway... So um, he said your amount of time spent cleaning can be reduced by 75% if you do three things. Reduce clutter, get the right cleaning tools, Mm -hmm. and make them accessible. Right. I totally agree with that. So yeah, don't throw your vacuum in the back of a bunch of boxes. Mm -hmm. You got to have it there. Oh, and take your shoes off at the door. Oh, yeah. I could see that. 75% if you do those four things. Yeah. Reduce clutter, right cleaning tools, make them accessible, shoes off at the door. I certainly need to do those things. (laughs) I really do. I'm pretty good. You're very good. About shoes at the door and that Mm -hmm. kind of stuff. You know, I could definitely be better at shoes at the door. Um, My biggest thing really is just that I've got kind of a lot of stuff that I need to go through. Um, You know, I had a 
a bigger space back when I was married, and I had to condense it all down to a smaller space. And I basically was like, well, I know I've that got- feel, bro. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, well, I've got a month to get out of here. So instead of going through the stuff now, I'm going to go through it once I get to my final destination, and we'll figure it out then. And uh, so I've been slowly trying to go through that. And I feel like I've, I've purged quite a bit. I've seen you purge. Yeah, yeah. You've done very well. I think so. But I definitely still have a long, long, long way to go. <laughs> what I like to do. In between Christmas and New Year's, usually, Mm -hmm. that's when I had like real dedicated time off. Mm. I like to clean like I'm moving. Yeah, that'd be nice. Start with one room Mm -hmm. and get rid of everything I haven't used, you know, for a Mm -hmm. few years. Something I can't imagine needing in a new place. Right. And then just, you know, scrubbing the shit out of CLRing the entire bathroom. Right. That kind of thing. I guess my only other cleaning tip would be. Get a cordless vacuum. Those are nice. I realized that half of my aversion to vacuuming was just that damn cord. Right. Unwinding it and winding it back up. So really making the cleaning tool accessible to you was getting rid of the cord. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. It was was the right cleaning tool. Mm Mm-hmm. One thing I wanted to point out, by the way, the My Discovery Kids Museum is actually in the Museum of Clean. Oh, cool. Yeah. So, Don Aslett, for showing the world how to clean from Pocatello, Idaho. You are IFAF this week. Mm-hmm. Crisp high five. Whoosh. 21 finger gun Thank salute. You. And chef's kiss. To you. No notes, no cap, no kidding. Rest in peace. Along with Dutch Bros in Rexburg, two things that are now open in Idaho Falls. Number one, Tamales Inc. Which I'm so excited about. That's the one we gave you the heads up on earlier this year. Mm-hmm. I guess they're all tamales. Yeah. Yeah. We haven't been. We got to go. Mm-hmm. Now, my personal favorite type of tamale are uh, Rajas tamales. They're basically like cheese and peppers, and they're just so freaking good. Mm. Oh, I love those. Yeah. Um, but you know, they also make, like, you can also get sweet tamales. Like cinnamon? Uh, like I think dessert you can tamales? Get, yeah, like dessert tamales. Oh. Yeah. Like, I, okay, if I'm remembering correctly. Uh, so, I only ever had one in Mexico. My um, Mexican's. My ex mother in law made one, uh, and it was like um, is pink, and it had um, raisins in it, and it was actually like pretty good. Oh, okay, yeah, but, anyway. but it still had masa on the outside. Uh huh. Yeah, still okay. masa and everything. Wasn't chocolate covered or deep fried? Nope, nothing crazy. No it tamales was good, Inc. Four seventy five Park Avenue. We'll have to give it a try. And then Spirit Halloween. Yes, I went in there today. As a matter of fact, uh-huh. yeah, I had a Already great time. Already open. Oh, Halloween yeah. gets ten weeks. I know. And tell me again why we can't think of Christmas before Thanksgiving. Tell me again because Christmas, why sometimes Christmas only gets three weeks. Here's why: Christmas takes four. so much more effort. You have less than four. You have to condense it into them that amount of time because if you spread that much effort over ten weeks, you would burn people out in one month. I'm just saying. All right. So you were in there. What'd you find? Uh, all kinds of fun stuff. I noticed that they're definitely going a lot more circusy this year with some of their like animatronics and stuff. All right. Like they had this big ass fun house that you can walk through. They had lots of scary clowns. They had one, which I, w- I should have gotten a better video of, but it actually had um, motion tracking technology. So it would watch you and the head would move with you. Oh, that's awesome. That was kind of spooky. They also had this really cute animatronic corpse bride set that I really dug. So one thing I like about Spirit Halloween is that they have like regular clothes too, but they're like, uh, you know, themed clothes, like spooky clothes. But you can go in and get like cute little sweaters and stuff or Mm. T-shirts. There was this one T-shirt that I actually thought was really cute. It was a bunch of uh, skeleton cowboys dancing around. And who, like, I don't know why they were cowboys, but they were and they were cute and I liked it. I already posted a Halloween meme on the Mike Helps Idaho Facebook page. Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. It's time. It was a bunch of animal skeletons all set up. Oh, I love those. Skeleton petting zoo. Oh, (laughs) just really never seen that idea before. I love that. Um, also, I've been seeing a lot of the orange and pink Halloween theme going on. Okay. So I love when I was growing up, the only Uh Halloween colors were orange and black. That was it. Right. And then sometime in the 90s, early 2000s, that toxic slime uh-huh. green yeah. got introduced about the same time as purple. Yes. And I was uh-huh. like, ooh, now we have four Halloween colors. Yeah. And now you're saying pink is one of them too. 
I would say so. It looks like it at least. Is that? Do you think that's maybe the Barbie influence? I kind of think it is. Now, I know I told you back before Barbie even came out that it was going to influence fashion big time and we were going to see a huge trend toward hyper femininity. Uh-huh. And here we are, babe. You called here it. Here we are. Yeah. And I'm so ex- I'm so here for it. Way to spot the trends. Honestly, I cannot wait for all of it to go on sale so I can just go <laughs> hog wild and buy all of the stuff because you know what? I think orange and pink might be my Halloween colors for forever now. No. If I remember correctly, Spirit Halloween does have like a big blowout. Uh huh. Is it on? Is it on Halloween, October thirty first, or do they? I do think it starts on Halloween. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then for like a day, maybe two, if you're lucky. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But I remember yeah. hearing about some great sales. Oh yeah, I saw. I afterwards. saw a couple of things that I was like, I'll be back for you. <laughs> All right, two more things, and then we'll let you go. Added to my stuff on Hulu: The Secret Lives of Mormon Wives. Which, by the way, I know nothing else. All I've seen is the promo image. They are not dressed like Mormons. Interesting, isn't it? You can't hide garments under a lot of those dresses. What the hell's going on there? Also, they don't look like polygamists. Is this like the Real Housewives of whatever, uh, where it's different housewives that are married to different men? Or is this a group of women who are all, all married to one guy? Well, and I don't know much about it, but I wonder if they're still Mormon. Mm-hmm. And here's why I wonder. It's a new reality show, by the way. Premieres September 6th. And I guess it's about a swinging scandal. Okay. I actually do think I kind of vaguely remember hearing about that. Like there was this group of swingers in, was it Utah or Las Vegas or something? Like Mormon swingers. And they were, you know, swinging. Mm-hmm. Um, but I didn't. They had the upside down pineapples. <laughs> right. But I didn't know that it was like. I don't know. That big of a deal? Didn't watch the trailer. All I know is probably going to watch the first episode. Okay. I I never watched The Real Housewives of Salt Lake. Yeah. Did you? Me either, no. Okay. I'm not really that into trash TV. Yeah. Like the most I go, I I do like a good competition show. uh, But like, yeah, the whole like Jersey Shore, Real Housewives, that kind of stuff. I never really dug. Yeah. Um, My mom loves Jersey Shore. And I know. <laughs> and I would watch that with her sometimes. And it was always just, it was such a train wreck and it always made me so mad. <laughs> so I couldn't watch it. I know that that's some people's comfort food. I don't sure. judge, but um, any anything scandalous, especially happening in our neck of the weeds. Right. I want to check out. Yeah. All right. And then a 50 year old cold case murder was solved, say police, after DNA evidence led them to a suspect in eastern Idaho. Wild. Yeah, right outside of Salmon, right? So uh, Michael Eugene Mullen, 75, arrested in Lemhi County last Wednesday Mm -hmm. for the murder of a Swedish woman in 1973. Wow. And I guess it happened in Marin County, right? So that's in uh, California. Okay. Yeah, I was kind of wondering, like, did it happen in Sweden? (laughs) She was assaulted and murdered in her unincorporated San Rafael home oh. while her husband was away at work in November of 1973. That's awful. Now, this is another one of those stories of uh, finding the killer, mm-hmm. not through his DNA necessarily, yeah. but through a family member, right? Like the Angie Dodge, Christopher Tapp right, thing. Right, or even the Golden State Killer, too. Yeah. Yeah, so basically they had his DNA from the crime scene, but it's not that they swabbed him or anything or collected his DNA that way. Uh, basically, they were able to find it through familial matches, through like ancestry kits and stuff like that. That's what it's called, yeah. Familial, familial search program is what they call it, yeah. Right, and so I wonder how many killers right now who have gotten away with it. Yeah. Are freaking out because I'm sure they probably thought, I'm never going to upload my DNA. Right. But it doesn't even take and me. you. But yeah. But what if any mm-hmm. of your family members do? Right. Right. And it can be, I think, even as far as like a second cousin or something pretty, like it can be pretty distant and they can still get a pretty good idea of where you are in that person's family tree. Right. I'm pretty sure my biological uh, brother and mm-hmm. I are like 99.9% matches. Mm-hmm. I yeah. think I've told that story on yeah. here before. Yeah, it's crazy. He, he's a rocket scientist in Tucson compared <laughs> our raw data. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's, it's pretty easy to tell. And I'm so uh-huh. glad because justice is finally going to be served 
Right. And then I'll say the same thing I said last time when talking about a cold case that was finally mm-hmm. closed. It sucks that it's 50 years later. Right. How many people are still alive to see that justice being served? Right, right. Yeah. And to me, that's kind of, I don't know, that tragic. Is. But I love that this um, this program is being taken as seriously as it is because yes. it just means that those cold cases are going to get solved faster and faster and faster. Love to see that. People aren't going to be able to get away with stuff anymore. Finally tonight, I love to see this, a good old-fashioned sign feud. (laughs) I know, I love those, right? (laughs) Between Fiesta Olay and Uh Arby's on 17th. Now, I will say that I'm biased. I'm much more of an Arby's girl than a Fiesta Olay girl, mostly because when I was a kid, Fiesta Olay was right next to the Civic. So that's where we always went whenever we'd go to the Civic with my dad. And (laughs) So you were a little tired of it? We got so sick of it that we, we ended up calling it Fiesta Hole. Instead, <laughs> use that one, Arby's. Yeah, right. There we go. You know, I'm like that with Culver's. It right. was the closest restaurant to the station I worked at in Wisconsin. Oh, fair. 99.1 WMYX, the mix. <laughs> oh, nice. I haven't even tried the new Culver's on Hit. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, no, I haven't even been. Even though they have delicious butter burgers and concrete. Mm-hmm. So Fiesta Olay and Arby's are kind of going at it in that <laughs> they... um. Fiesta Olay put up, I don't know who went first. It was Arby's first. Or how long this has been going on. It's been a couple of weeks. Arby's first? Yeah. Okay. They put up, rather have meat sweats than a burrito. Right. Which I thought was kind of a weird way of putting it. You only get meat sweats when you have a ton of meat. Right. Which I think is the point that they're making. Their sandwiches have a ton of meat on them. Yeah. And they're saying, even at the worst, meat sweats, I'd still rather have that than a burrito. And then Fiesta Olay put up sweaty meats, no crisp meats. So yeah. <laughs> it's not in, it's not exactly clever what they're doing. Yeah, not not quite. But I think but we we're can on, help. We're on the right path, you guys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Can we help? Yeah. Maybe our commenters can also leave some of their best right. ones down there so that Arby's and Fiesta Olay can pick through those. Whatever side you want to take, Arby's or Fiesta Olay, yeah. pick a side and come up with an insult. Uh-huh. I was thinking, you know, like, I mean, a real low ball, easy one, Arby's would be Fiesta, more like Siesta. Okay, that's a good one. Because it's a snooze fest. Now, to be fair, I also came up with one for Arby's against Fiesta Olay. Okay. It's very simple. Mm -hmm. And it's like the only one I could come up with. Taco, more like talk no. (laughs) (laughs) That'd be good. Right? I think so. (laughs) Fiesta Olay could say, we don't have much beef with you. Just like your sandwiches. Oh, that would be good. That's hard to fit on a sign, though. Yeah. Yeah, that's tough. Needs work. We're, we're, yeah. we're just workshopping it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Arby's could say something like, we're nacho average restaurant. Or okay. would that be well, Fiesta Olay? I feel like Which that would be would Fiesta use? Olay that would say that. Okay. Yeah. All right. So there's two for Fiesta Olay and two for Arby's. There we go. Good. Fiesta Olay could say, your mom has roast beef. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they could go that low, but that might, corporate wouldn't be happy. <laughs> I was thinking Napoleon Dynamite. Your mom goes to mm-hmm, college. Mm-hmm. All right, whatever. <laughs> That's our show. We'll leave you with a little bit more of the Sunflower Days Stormy Sunset. Subscribe on YouTube. There's a link in the post. Have a great week. See you next time. Until then, stay fresh cheese bags. Cheese bags.